Hello, my name is Mike Jurek. I'm a divorce attorney and I'm the author of this book entitled A Path to Financial Recovery After Divorce. Avoid pitfalls that snag divorcees and navigate your way to financial independence. In each one of these videos, I'm covering a mistake that I regularly see divorcees make that effectively stalls their financial recovery. Today's video is, frankly, it's not for everyone. It's specifically for recipients of spousal support, which is also known as alimony. The number one mistake that divorcees make when it comes to spousal support is using it to subsidize their living of the same lifestyle that they lived during the marriage. This is paradoxical because one of the main philosophical arguments that led state governments to passing laws regarding spousal support is the belief that the lower earning spouse from a lengthy marriage should be entitled to live that same lifestyle they enjoyed during the marriage. In reality though, if you are the recipient of spousal support, I'm going to tell you this is the exact opposite of how you should view it. Ideally, spousal support should be used to clean up any debt in your name and bridge the gaps in your budget while you work to gain the education, the skills, and the experience necessary to boost your income as much as possible by the time the court-ordered support obligation expires. In most instances, spousal support, if ordered, is only temporary. Even if you're awarded permanent spousal support, the truth is that the payment of money into your bank account each and every month is never guaranteed. Remember that even if your ex is ordered to pay you a sum of money every month, you may not get it. That means if your mortgage payment or your car payment or your rent payment is completely dependent upon your ex's payment of support, there's always a risk that the money may not show up when you are expecting it and needing it to. My office gets countless phone calls every month from people who haven't received the support, whether it's spousal support or child support, that they're supposed to get. This happens for any number of reasons. Sometimes the non-payment happens because the obligor has lost their job, or they've become temporarily disabled, or permanently disabled, or the ex has outright refused to comply with the court order. Just think about the 2020 and 2021 and 2022 pandemic impact that has really devastated many parts of the economy and for a while early on the unemployment rates. Think back even further to the Great Recession and how many people were out of work in 2009 and 2010 and 2011. And I was one of them in 2009 and the early part of 2010. If your ex-spouse loses his or her job, you're not going to get paid because, frankly, they're not having income coming in, so there's no money to withhold. And this impacts you because if you are relying upon that money, it may seriously jeopardize your ability to keep a roof over your head if you're relying on that money for your house payment. Therefore, it's a good idea to treat the period that you're receiving spousal support as a race against the clock. It's not the time to live a temporarily inflated lifestyle until the clock stops. During the time you receive spousal support, one of the smartest things that you can do with the money is to invest in yourself so you can increase your earning potential. This may mean having to go back to school to get a better degree, obtain some sort of certification, or acquire specialized job training. So long as the training and education yield a higher paying job, the program's cost is going to be worth it in the long run. But not all advanced degrees are worth the cost. If you're going to spend your time and money acquiring a degree, a certification, or specialized training, you need to make sure that your credentials are in demand and that a higher salary is virtually guaranteed. You must also commit to getting through this program by paying cash and taking on no student loan debt. Because remember, the point is to get out of debt, not to accumulate more debt. Now you might be watching this saying, Mike, you are crazy. I need that money to live. I need it to pay my bills. I need it to put food on my table. And I get that. There's nothing wrong with that. See, you need every dollar and every dollar helps. That said, what is your long-term plan? 
because one of these days the clock is going to run out and you're not going to have that money coming in every month. If you don't adjust your lifestyle accordingly or have a longer term plan, you're going to be up a creek. And that's what we're trying to avoid. In the book, I use the example of Roy and Pam to illustrate this exact same situation. The example is Roy is ordered to pay Pam spousal support at a rate of $1,500 per month for four years. After four years, Pam will see a significant reduction in her monthly income since her only source of funds is going to be her job. If Pam makes $40,000 a year, assuming no raises, her income for years one, two, three, and four while she receives spousal support is going to be $58,000 per year. But what happens in year five? Her household income goes down from $58,000 per year to $40,000 per year. That is a massive cut. And the absolute worst thing Pam could do during those four years is to live like she's making $58,000 per year without having any plan to increase her income up to $58,000 per year or more four years from day one. Because from day one that she starts receiving support, she's on the clock. She has 48 months to get out of debt, boost her skills and education, and do everything in her power to increase her income. Otherwise, when the spousal support term expires, Pam is going to be in for a rude awakening. She's going to see her annual household income drop by nearly one third if she does nothing in the meantime to raise her wages. Therefore, every dollar of spousal support that Pam doesn't invest in herself, in her education, in her debt reduction, or in some manner to improve her future is just a wasted opportunity. Pam's best course of action here is to become acclimated to living off of her income of $40,000. If she has any post-divorce debt, she needs to eliminate that debt by squeezing every dollar that she can out of her budget and using the spousal support to pay off that debt. Her $40,000 per year salary will go much further if she's free from having to make payments for credit cards, her car, student loans, or any other monthly payment that's otherwise bleeding her wallet dry. Being debt-free will ensure that whatever she brings home as her income is not siphoned off by creditors every month after this cushion of spousal support terminates. After Pam extinguishes her debt, her primary focus should be on bolstering her career. From day one, she should be applying for better paying jobs. Her budget is going to have a lot more wiggle room if she lands a job paying $46,000 or $50,000 per year instead of the forty dollars where she's at. But she shouldn't stop there. With that extra $18,000 a year for the next four years, which is going to total $72,000 over the course of the four years, she can afford to pay to obtain a degree or certification even while maintaining her full-time job. Again, some of you are going to be watching this and say, Mike, you're nuts. She's dealing with a divorce. How can she possibly work full time and complete an online program to get her degree when her focus needs to be on emotionally recovering from this divorce? My response is that there's always an excuse not to do something. Pam certainly has the right to spend that spousal support as she pleases but she'll have nobody to blame but herself if she sees her household income either stay stagnant or drop <clears throat> after that spousal support stops. If at the end of 48 months, she's working the exact same job at the exact same salary, she's going to be stressed beyond belief as she lays in bed wondering how she's going to weather a third, 33, 30% roughly drop in her income. It's entirely possible for someone recovering from a divorce to work a full-time job and to go to school for degree or certification through many of the online and evening programs available. Many part-time evening and online programs exist to accommodate people just like Pam. Nobody ever said this was going to be easy. So if Pam uses this money that she receives as spousal support to eliminate her debts, 
increase her education and supercharge her earning ability, she's not going to face financial ruin at the end of her court ordered time frame. Or if her ex, Roy, misses a support payment, Pam's going to come out on the other side of this divorce, fully capable of counting on herself and earning a higher income than she ever would have in her career at the time that she got divorced. Plus, with no debt, Pam will be able to bolster her retirement savings, put money away for college funds for her kids, make additional principal payments on her house so she can pay it off early, and be in a position to be generous to others. I also need to point out an important thing of spousal support and the fact that it's just temporary in nature. In many states, spousal support can be reduced or even terminated based upon the recipient's cohabitation in a marriage-type relationship. In almost every state, I believe, it's terminable upon remarriage. So here's what this means. If after the divorce, you start living with somebody else, a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, it's possible that your spousal support can be reduced or even terminated. And that'll certainly be the case if you get remarried. Sadly enough, though, I have seen instances where people have delayed their engagement or marriage to a new partner because they couldn't afford to lose the spousal support they received from their ex-spouse. I can only hope that you follow the advice I'm giving you in this video and throughout my book so you never, never find yourself in such a grim position of putting off your future just because you so desperately need the spousal support to keep rolling in. It's heartbreaking to see someone unable to move forward with a new relationship because they are so financially beholden to the spousal support paid by their ex-spouse. Bottom line here, spousal support is temporary and it's not guaranteed. Don't use it like it's going to be there forever because it won't be. Use it to bridge the gap in your budget only temporarily. Use it to eliminate debts to free up more of your income. Start to work to bolster your income. Take the steps you need to to increase your qualifications so you can get a better job with a higher paying income. But if you use it to live the lifestyle you lived while married, you are just squandering the opportunity. Let's not do that. Let's get you in a better paying position so you can have money each month to put in your retirement account. Let's get you to the point where you can have a paid off house. How sweet would that be? Heed this advice that I lay out in the book and you're going to be well on your way. Check out MikeJurek.com for more information about the book. Buy it on Amazon. Get the auto audio book on Audible.com or check it out from your local library. Either way, the resources and guidance in this book can be life-changing for you. Hit subscribe to help me out to put some wind in the sails of this operation so I can get the word out to more people who certainly need it. Thanks again for watching and take care. Uh -huh.